Let me say something here, and I think that you're probably starting to see it too. Did you notice that um, Jared Swift heard IBF? 154 pound champion is now a target by now WBC um, 154 pound champion Jermel Charlo and now you have Iris Lindy Laura who was land saying listen I want to fight him so I'm wondering why is Laura not fighting or wanting to fight Jermel Charlo right you would think that it would be you would think that Charlo and, and why Charlo is not fighting wanting to fight him you think that there would be a bigger money fight than fighting Gerald Swift Heard, right? So, in my opinion, you know, common sense would tell me that they think that Gerald Swift Heard is the weaker of, of 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 the bunch. Now, you may wonder, well, how does Demetrius Andre factor into all this? Multiple things is uh, Iris Lady Laura just said recently, um, in the media, um, that that um Demetrius Andre has priced himself out, which sounds like Demetrius Andre. If you see on paper that Jamel Charlo has made $100,000, and if you see that the purses over the last couple of years, especially after Heyman was giving out all that money, if you've noticed they significantly, you know, decreased. You know, so Demetrius Andrade has to understand his market value. And I understand that he wants to get paid. You may say, well, boxers need to get paid. and Where's all the money and everything going? But, yo, it's not, it's not as easy as you think. So, you know, if he's asking for some old five hundred thousand dollars and all type of shit like that, that money's not there for, you know, him, you know, to fight an Iris Lindy Laura, especially with Iris Lindy Laura, is going to command more. Also, also, Demetrius Andre can't fight Jamel Charlo according to the WBA and the WBC rules because um Andre has the WBA world where Iris Lindy Laura has the WBA Super World, so he would have to fight Iris Lindy Laura first, right? Before he could fight, you know, any other champions to try to unify. So he's in a tough situation. So when it comes to that Laura fight, if he really want to prove who he is, and if he really want to be active, and if he really, really, and if he really wants to show fans like, listen, I'm legit, then I'm sorry. This is a situation where if they offering you, you know, when you look at the landscape of boxing right now, that's why he's got to have a lawyer or somebody that's in boxing to let him know, like, listen, bro. When it comes to that, like the ticket sales, this is the max amount, you know, we can get. When it comes to like the TV rights, this is all, you know, I guess it would have to be on Showtime. Showtime would pay. So, you know, we can try to get you, you know, 250K or one, 200. You know, but then Laura, he got to take a pay cut too, but he's got, obviously, he got to get 500. You see what I'm saying? Now, of course, those are just arbitrary numbers. I'm just throwing out a scenario. But what I'm saying is, in this case, you know, uh, um, Andre can't really be, you know, calling any real shots like that. Not until he gets, you know, the belt that's above his. He can say he's a champion, but really, your championship belt has limitations on it, bro. You know, so when it comes to Swift Herd, 20 no 14 KOs, he had beat Tony Harrison. You know, he beat uh, Joe. I was at the Joe Jordan fight. I did get a chance to interview him. And one of the crazy things we were talking about is how, you know, this was before he fought Joe Jordan. They had a uh, press conference in Philly for Garcia versus Vargas. So we was talking about how, like, yo, you're ranked pretty high by the IBF. And, you know, from what I know, if you are ranked by the IBF, you will get your title shot. You know, and sure enough, he did get his title shot. He fought for a vacant title against Tony Harrison, and he won. No stoppage. But, but the thing is, he didn't look good, but at the same time, that was his first big major test, depending on how you look at Joe Jordan. You know, so I think that when it comes to, to Jamel Charles calling him out and to, um, you know, Laura calling him out, they're looking like, oh, shit, the young, the young kid on the block. Let's try to get him the new champion. But at this, at this point in time, Jared Swift Hurd is in a good situation because he just won the title. So, therefore, he don't have to fight a unification right away. Don't, win, oh, don't, get, it, don't get it twisted. Since he's with the IBF, as I said, he's going to have a mandatory sometime in the year. But the good thing is he can fight a voluntary with somebody in the top 15 of the IBF. Let me go look at the IBF rankings real quick. He can fight somebody in the top 15 of the IBF before his mandatory. And then when his mandatory comes along, he can say, well, you know, I'm going to choose to fight a unification instead of my mandatory, then fight my mandatory afterwards. But let's go see who his mandatory might be at 154. Also, remember, whatever happens with Brooke versus Spence, if Spence moves up, I mean, if Brooke moves up, even if Brooke moves, loses to Spence and moves to 154, the dead IBF could likely very make him the mandatory within the next year. So, you know, a mandatory might be a guy by the name of uh, Cedric Vatu 
or uh, Marcelo Matano, and I believe uh, Jamal Charles for him. You know, the 154-pound rankings of the WBC, I mean, of the IBF, is not that deep. You know, when you get to names that you may know, you got Liam Williams, who's ranked number nine, you know, but he's likely going to be fighting um, um, Liam Smith again. You got Julian J. Rock Williams, who can start working his way back up. He's number 10. Tony Harrison, obviously, for him, Michael Soros. So the rankings are not that deep, you know. But like I said, I just find it funny that they're calling him out but not calling him. I mean, for example, Jamel Charlo had a chance after he, you know, beat the shit out of um, Charles Hatley to call out Iris Lady Laura. And the crazy thing, if I had more time with him, you know, I would say, well, why not Iris Lady Laura? Those, and that's why I say I'm getting better as media to know, like, what questions to ask. You know, because I, I should have asked, like, well, you know, you say you want to fight, you know, um, Jamel Charlo, I mean, um, uh, Swift Heard, but what about Iris Lady Laura? Don't you think that it would be more of a profitable fight? And remember, they're both not trained by the same trainer. Ronnie Shields trains Jamal Charlo, who's the 160-pounder, and Iris Landy Lara. You know, but at the same time, I do understand that, you know, it may be Al Heyman because, truth be told, Al Heyman picks these guys' fights. You know, they, they can interject and say, no, Al, I want him. But for the most part, I would be like, nah, stay away from that right now and go this route. That was just my opinion, though. But like I said, man, as far as Andre, you know, if it's Trinity pricing itself out, it's like you got to look at the landscape, bro. You know, and your belt don't really mean enough for you to really be calling the shots. My personal opinion. Then again, it's the fucking truth. Please subscribe and teach you controversy. This is Teach You Controversy Live.